Bienvenidos al Medical Spanish Podcast. Soy la doctora Molly Merton. Through this podcast, I provide interactive audio lessons that teach practical Spanish for healthcare and elsewhere. Hola a todos. A member at docmolly.com recently requested that I cover the NIH stroke scale in Spanish. The NIH stroke scale is a neurological exam developed by the National Institutes of Health to measure the severity of a stroke. When a patient presents to the hospital with a suspected stroke, this exam is performed soon after their arrival and multiple times throughout their hospital stay. So I think providers in the hospital will find this set of lessons very useful. Thank you, Jaime, for suggesting this topic. Before we begin, remember, all the audio lessons at docmolly.com are to be used for the sole purpose of learning Spanish. They are not intended to teach medicine and should not be interpreted as medical advice. Therefore, in these lessons, I am not teaching you how to perform the NIH stroke scale. Instead, I am teaching you Spanish that may be used when performing such an exam. ¿Les queda claro a todos? Bien. In today's dialogue, you will hear a patient present after the sudden onset of weakness in her right leg and the first portion of the neurological exam. Then we'll begin reviewing the dialogue line by line, and you will be asked to interact with the audio lesson and interpret between English and Spanish. As we go through lines of the dialogue, I will bring up different grammar points, many of which we have covered in other lessons, and I will include links to these lessons in the show notes. We will complete the review of today's dialogue, plus cover the rest of the NIH Stroke Scale exam in Spanish in the premium lessons at docmolly.com. So, if you enjoy these lessons, head over to docmolly.com and become a premium member. It is the best way to support the creation of this podcast. Ahora, escuchemos el diálogo. Buenas tardes, soy el doctor Méndez. ¿Usted es la señora Martínez? Sí, soy yo. Dígame, ¿qué le pasa? ¿Qué le trae a las urgencias hoy? Bueno, estaba trabajando en el jardín y casi me caigo. De repente sentí la pierna derecha débil, sin fuerza, y la siento adormecida. ¿Cuándo ocurrió esto? No sé, hace casi una hora. Salí a trabajar a la una y ya son las tres. Entonces, ¿serían las dos? Muy bien. Voy a hacer una evaluación completa. ¿En qué mes estamos? Agosto. ¿Qué edad tiene usted? 64 años. Muy bien. Ahora voy a pedirle que realice dos tareas. ¿Lista? Sí, lista. Cierre los ojos. Ahora ábralos. Haga un puño con su mano izquierda. Y ahora abra la mano. Muy bien. Ahora quiero que mire mi dedo y lo siga hasta este lado. Y ahora hacia el otro lado. Sin mover la cabeza, por favor. Siga mi dedo. Bien hecho. Now let's practice interpreting each phrase of the exam between English and Spanish. Interpret into English. Buenas tardes, soy el doctor Méndez. ¿Usted es la señora Martínez? Good afternoon. I am Dr. Mendez. Are you Mrs. Martinez? And as we've talked about in other lessons, we use the definite article before titles during introductions. Soy el Dr. Mendez. Usted es la señora Martinez? Now, interpret into Spanish. Good afternoon. I am Dr. Mendez. Are you Mrs. Martinez? Buenas tardes, soy el doctor Méndez. ¿Usted es la señora Martínez? And then how does she reply, yes, that's me. Sí, soy yo. So we always conjugate the verb ser according to the pronoun. In this case, yo. Yes, that's me. Sí, soy yo. Interpret the following into English. Dígame, ¿qué le pasa? ¿Qué le trae a las urgencias hoy?
Tell me, what is wrong? What brings you to the emergency room today? So let's break that down as we interpret it back into Spanish. Tell me. Dígame. Dígame. And we are addressing the patient as usted. Referring to a friend, how would you say, tell me? Dime. Interpret, what's wrong? ¿Qué le pasa? ¿Qué le pasa? So literally, what's happening to you is how we ask what's wrong in Spanish. ¿Qué le pasa? How would you ask a friend, what's wrong? ¿Qué te pasa? Interpret into Spanish, what brings you to the emergency room today? ¿Qué le trae a las urgencias hoy? ¿Qué le trae a las urgencias hoy? You could also use sala de urgencias or sala de emergencias to say ER. So using sala de emergencias, interpret what brings you to the emergency room today. ¿Qué le trae a la sala de emergencias hoy? Interpret. Bueno, estaba trabajando en el jardín y casi me caigo. De repente sentí la pierna derecha débil, sin fuerza, y la siento adormecida. One more time. Bueno, estaba trabajando en el jardín y casi me caigo. De repente sentí la pierna derecha débil, sin fuerza, y la siento adormecida. Well, I was working in the yard, and I almost fell. Suddenly, my right leg felt weak, limp, and it feels numb. So let's break this down as we interpret it back into Spanish. Well, I was working in the yard, and I almost fell. Bueno, estaba trabajando en el jardín y casi me caigo. So here, she sets the scene with the imperfect, estaba trabajando, and it may have surprised you that she uses the present tense to say, and I almost fell, casi me caigo. In Spanish, it is very common to use the present tense to say that something almost happened, but the action was never completed. So interpret that one again. I was working in the garden and I almost fell. Estaba trabajando en el jardín y casi me caigo. Of course, you can also use jardín to say garden. Then how does she say, suddenly my right leg felt weak? De repente sentí la pierna derecha débil. And how does she say limp when describing her leg? Sin fuerza, literally, without force. Now let's examine the phrase, sentí la pierna débil. This is a very common construction in Spanish. We conjugate the verb sentir based on who is feeling the sensation. So we use the verb sentir. Yo sentí, followed by a part of the body. La pierna, followed by the adjective that describes it, débil. My leg felt weak. Sentí la pierna débil. So now, interpret. And suddenly, my right leg felt weak. De repente sentí la pierna derecha débil. Interpret into English, y la siento adormecida. And it feels numb. So here, la refers to la pierna. And what word did she use to say numb? Adormecida, because she's referring to la pierna. So interpret that one back into Spanish. And it feels numb.
Y la siento adormecida. What's another word for numb in Spanish? Entumecido, or when referring to the leg, entumecida. So using entumecida, interpret, my leg feels numb. Siento la pierna entumecida. And that concludes this audio Spanish lesson. If you liked this lesson and want to continue to review today's dialogue, go to docmolly.com. For a limited time, you can get the premium lesson that covers the second half of the dialogue for free. Just click on the link in your show notes. Finally, this lesson features Spanish teacher Javier Mendez of the San Pedro Spanish School in San Pedro, Guatemala. In 2016, my niece and I spent two weeks there studying Spanish and had the time of our lives. I plan to return this year and I highly recommend the school. They also offer classes online. And you guessed it, there's a link in your show notes. Un abrazo a todos y nos vemos en docmolly.com. Hasta luego. This is a production of docmolly.com, where you will find interactive audio lessons that teach Spanish for healthcare and elsewhere. 